Welcome back to another episode of Tech I Want. I'm Dan. And I'm Rafi. And we're back again with another campaign page review. Lucky back- you guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're back to Indiegogo again. And this time we're looking at Roidme Eva. A- Ava, Ava or Yeva? Eva. EVA. Uh-huh. Self-cleaning and emptying robot vacuum. Yeah. It's a self-cleaning and emptying, mopping and vacuuming, two in one, 12 and 12 newtons, mm-hmm. I guess, pressurized mopping, super 3,200 PA suction. Pressure, I guess. That's be... mm-hmm. Again, pressure, yeah. Yeah, of suction. This thing sucks. <laughs> yes, it does. Uh, 3,000 times. <laughs> <laughs> Let's check out the video just to see how. Yeah. Open it. Put it in. I, I like the this fun. Start cleaning. It's like a cheeky vacuum. The music as well. You yeah. Know, you get the impression that it's running around. Dude, anytime I see, bag. yeah, anytime I see electronics moving on their own autonomously, I just love the idea of giving them character. You know, like they have a personality. Have a yeah. I wonder if you could name it. Why not? That's like just an added feature. Easy thing. You know, you have Alexa, Google. Yeah. Looks like uh, iPhone one Siri. Give your robot a name. Is it Yeva, perhaps? Maybe. Is it a female? How do you know when a robot's a female or a male? I don't, I don't think we can say that anymore. They're, gender, have, they're genderless. Does genderless it have a dongle? Genderless. That's the question you got to ask. <laughs> Wait, uh, let's not dive into it. Okay. Okay, it's going through the features pretty fast. So basically, it has, it's a vacuum, like Roomba's. Yeah. But it also mops. Right. Which I think Am is I what, right? yeah, which is what sets this thing apart. It's got a fluid chamber that you can put in water and as well as cleaning solvent, and then it has a mop underneath it. And that's not unheard of either. There are smart mops out yeah. there. But I think what kind of surprised me with this campaign was the self-emptying. Mm. So my Roomba, it has a little docking station that's about this big. And whenever it's running low on charge, it searches for the docking station, comes, sits on it, and charges this docking station is about like that big, no? Yeah. And it goes in and there's some kind of extra vacuum that sucks all the dirt out of the vacuum itself right. into a container within the dock. Right. What was it, what was your Roomba doing? So it, it, it does all that. Yeah, so yeah. so how do you, it, you have to empty it out yourself. Ah, okay. But you have to empty this one out. You just empty it in a, in a centralized location yeah. rather than hunting down the, the Roomba, I guess. It's totally autonomous. Uh. Next, they'll be interfacing with the garbage man and just drop it out. Self-cleaning up to 60 days of dirt. 60 days? Yeah. Ah, that's a big chamber. Exactly. So the small Roomba, it can fit like a day's worth of dirt. Sometimes I need to empty it twice while it's cleaning our small apartment. How big is your apartment? It's very dirty. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But this can keep going and going and going because it has a big dirt chamber. Sure. Okay. Ooh. But it can't get up on the table, you know? She was drinking something on the table. How's it going to jump up there? <laughs> I love I, I love the idea of this. Like, she just yawned, spilled over a glass of milk, but which, by the way, who drinks milk anymore? I don't know. And then, like, the robot, ins- Alexa, come clean this shit up, basically, you know? Like, yeah. she doesn't even get up out of her seat anymore to clean it up. No, no sense of responsibility, I feel. It's like, let the robot take care of it. I can't be bothered. We've gone back to Roman times. With slaves and stuff, yeah? Totally. Totally. That's exactly what I was thinking when I first saw this. I was like, okay, now we just have another reason why when eventually the robots do take over and control and enslave all of humanity and turn us into batteries. I'll say this is why. This is the reason why. Because we made them clean up our spill milk. (laughs) Had to be white as well. It wasn't chocolate milk or something. Is that a race thing you're trying to get into? (laughs) Look how liquidy that is, by the way. It's milk. Oh, is that? Yeah, but it's not. Is it just spreading milk around? I was hoping that that, that water that was left around <laughs> it was just from the it on the walls. Yeah, can't see it. It's got to be. Clean. I like this kid. He's very. He's very rude. I would be so Let me pissed. Throw my chips up into the air. If I was that, if that kid was my friend, or he was that kid was coming over to our house, I'd be like, Dude, if he was your friend, I'd be concerned. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> poor kid. Why do I have? Why am I a forty-year-old man with like seven-year-old kids? As friends. <laughs> but <laughs> but you'd want to test it. 
I, I kind of understand that kid. You think he was yeah, testing yeah. it? If I was a kid, I was like, dude, my don't dad waste the pa- this... don't waste the potato chips, man. <laughs> oh, okay. But if my dad brought home this robot vacuum when I was a kid, I'd be like, I don't believe that. You know, let me spill some milk. Grandma would spill the milk with her like low Shaky blood pressure. Hands, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd spill the chips. <laughs> We'd put it to the test. There'd just be stains all over your house. I do like the music. It's really funky and upbeat. I thought this kid was controlling the 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 <laughs> wind the, device. What was that controller? The panda. The panda. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It looks like it. Difficult to clean pet hair. Not anymore. Oh, don't worry, I'll do it. See, it's got a personality. This part's nuts. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's. They haven't designed anything there. What do you mean? It's just kind of brute force its way over that step. Totally. I kind of, I was hoping it was going to lift itself up. It has oh. some weird like mechanism or anything. It just kind of kept driving forward. It's I feel like, like a bulldozer. Well, that's what I was thinking. I feel like it's a tank, you know, yeah. it's got some kind of tracks in there. I think it that's awesome. It down the steps. Can, can your Roomba do that? Uh, no, we get stuck on the carpet. Yeah. Look at this. This one adjusts. Oh. This one, this one can go up and down oh. depending on what the, the floor is. But it also has a stair sensor, doesn't it? I like this. My Roomba doesn't do this. My Roomba is a lower level one. The fact that you can tell it not to go in this area. Yeah. Do you find that happens? Like you, you don't want it well, to you go? You have all that dirty underwear corner. You know, ah. like, don't go in there. It does go in there stuff. though? Yeah. <laughs> and this is that base that we were saying was dispensable. It looks like a coffee machine. <laughs> Maybe it does that too. Yeah. The future version. Dirty coffee made out of <laughs> the ground sweat. <laughs> You know what? I, I don't like the name, though. Roid me? Roid me? It sounds like a hemorrhoid dream, basically. <laughs> well, I guess roid droid and then ah. me. So I was reading about this. It's John Wang. <laughs> John Wang is a creator. I don't know why I found that funny. Sorry. Why? Because he's like, I tell you why. He's like, he's the John Wayne of uh, autonomous cleaning products, you know? Very nice. Come over Good here. Save. I'll be all <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but he has 10 campaigns, but apparently this, Ten? this Roid yeah. Me company, it's being acquired or they're partnered with, they're working with Xiaomi. Yeah, I saw that too. So I guess that's where the Me comes into play. Right. No? Right. They have phones, Red Me, Xiaomi, and now this is the Roid Me. Yeah. Which, if you go down a little bit deeper, it's it's weird because actually their, their specialty is auto parts. Yeah? Yeah. I didn't find that. That's great. <clears throat> Because I saw a lot of I saw a lot of suction devices here, uh, right here. Okay. Roidme focuses on intelligent products for car, <laughs> applying the internet development model based on the user's experience. Roidme developed product to provide convenient and practical car intelligent products and services. Having now, more fun when driving. There could be a, a translation thing going on here. Maybe car is also vacuum. clean floor or vacuum. Yeah, because looking through their previous campaigns, that was most of their product are not vacuums, but they're suction devices. <laughs> suction or blowing, they like yeah. air, you know? So they have the smart vacuum, they have a hair dryer, they have a big vacuum, not smart, and then they have blue blocker sunglasses. The outlier, yeah, yeah. coming out of nowhere is the sunglasses. Uh, inflatable tire tire inflator. Which again is just blowing, uh-huh. right? Air purifier for your car. Maybe that's what they meant, car air purifier. Ah, I see, yeah. Anyway, oh, music, and then streaming music yeah, in your car. Yeah. So they had two weird products that they yeah. picked up on Alibaba and tried to Indiegogo. But yeah, they already have almost 400 backers, probably by the time this video comes out, and $300,000 raised. Out of their 10,000 gold, so again, you know, the it's dodgy low, low goal. Yeah. And there's something else dodgy about this, the fact that they're set up in New York, according to Indiegogo, Uh but then everything points towards them being a Chinese company. So they've kind of wiggled their way into getting U.S. What's it called? Citizenship? No, no. They have a green card? (laughs) Company green card? Company green card? No, when they register a company. They've registered their company in the States for the purposes of Indiegogo, I think. Ah. But production, manufacturing, and probably the entire workforce is based in China. Do you know what that changes if they're registered in the U.S.? Um... No, no I, don't, than, I don't either. Like, yeah. it's like dishonesty, I think. 
to, they are dishonest for registering in the U.S., or it, it makes people think that they're more credible because they are registered in the U.S.? Well, it makes people think they're more credible because they're registered in the U.S., yeah. and that's why they're doing it, which right. that's why I kind of say it's a little dishonest. Yeah. Uh, going into the to the features, it, sells, it says self-cleaning, self-emptying, quick-drying, three cleaning modes, 12 Newton pressurized mopping, which in this part I think is weird because it says bionic mopping cleans and removes all the stubborn stains. I thought bionic was a weird choice of words here. So then I looked it up, and bionic implies body parts that are robotic. Okay. So it has, like, hands going on down there. I suppose. Like, it, gets, it, it brings us one step closer to having this thing be a personality. You know, this is a living thing. Bionic bio, I'm guessing, something in the roots there. Yes, ick. <laughs> so, yeah. That, Super suction. Right. 360 okay. degrees all-around scanning, which is the uh, LDS Omnidirectional, Latter-day Saints. Uh, work with Alexa and Google and smart app control. Which again, um, let's go back to the price. I want to put this in comparison with other smart vacuums out there. Yeah. $800, $750. That's a pretty pricey yeah. vacuum. And if you look at Roomba counterparts, so I think uh, I, we have a lower end model now in the $400 range that doesn't AI map out your house. So it's constantly bashing into the same walls over and over again. This one has that, but then again, so does Roomba's eight hundred dollar model. So it's not, you're not getting more for less, right? But but it but, but you it, are. <laughs> fifty fifty dollars less. Plus, you're getting a mop. Does the other Roomba have a mop? I don't think it does. Yeah. And it doesn't have the dispenser. Yeah. Uh, so for me, what it, what it sounds like you're saying is that it's pretty comparable to the competition. If not, it's a, it's a little bit cheaper, right? Like Yeah. Well, it has more features. I think it's comparable in price, but with a few more features that right. make it worth your while. Right. Um, another thing that uh, I think that is interesting, uh, you can do up to 200 meters of cleaning. Like you can clean that much space. And, and like, uh, I think that's huge. That's, that's like one floor of a, of a house, I'm guessing, if not one and a half floors. I, don't, I know it's not going to go upstairs, but it can definitely do my apartment at least uh, three times in one charge. Yes, it can only do half of my apartment. No, I'm just <laughs> But uh, on one charge, that's the charge, no? Yeah. So it can like, stop halfway and then pick up tomorrow. You can go on for a few days right. between charges. If it needed to, that's a huge amount of space. That's like 600 meter yeah space if it needed to go, come back and take a break and that's mopping and everything included huh and it also has space for all that trash inside it 200 meters squared worth of trash i don't know no, no the, I, it just said the charge okay uh, it, yeah I, I don't i don't know how much it can uh, it can clean do you know no i don't it's a good question good question um it has sensors like you said, and you can control it all with an app, which was interesting. Yeah, so with the sensors, it maps out your house, so it knows where to go. Yeah. You can also tell it where not to go. So right. if there's a kid's playing area or your dirty underwear, tell it not to go there. And even if you don't program in stairs and things like that, it can figure it out and knows that this is its limit. Don't suicide off the off the landing. Yeah, you know what I, I found interesting is that it says that the uh, LDS omnidirectional sensor is that so it's there so that it can work effectively in the dark. So whatever the sensor does. Mm -hmm. And also so it doesn't uh, get stuck under furniture. So I guess this thing can, can sense if something is too low for it. It's not going to try it's, and get in there. Yeah, which I'm wondering, does yours get stuck underneath furniture ever? Like mine underneath gets stuck the couch? under there. And then, you know you're saying, like, do these things have a personality or not? Yeah. I think mine purposefully goes under the bed and turns itself off under there. When it, when it's tired of working, it's yeah, just yeah. like, it's I It's not I even out it of up. charge. It's just like, I'm, I'm more or less done cleaning this space. I'm going to go under the bed and turn myself off. Have you guys given yours a name? Uh, Pumba. Pumba the Roomba. Pumba the Roomba. I like it. <laughs> uh, so you can pick up, yeah, hair, dust, and little balls. If you have a lot of little balls lying around your house. Yeah. Shotgun pellets. It'll clean up the crime scene for you, you know? Hey, I wonder if they target the mob with these kinds of things. You think so? Yeah. Someone's, some mobsters are coming in to, to clean up with this big Roomba. Or by, what is this thing called again? Broid me coming Broid in with them? <laughs> No, but what, what, what's really setting this thing apart is that it's got the, the, the housing here that allows it to charge, also allows it to unload whatever's dirty, as including, and it also cleans while it's inside of there. Mm -hmm. it so, it has, yeah, so it has a self-cleaning. Yeah, so it has a self-cleaning. 
and then it stores it inside of that for up to what was it six sixty days sixty days yeah before you have to unload and uh, clean it. It's almost like you know what it reminds me of the design and everything. It's like these smart uh, pet dispensers that they have. Yeah. So they have these things that you just add I don't know a month's worth of food inside. Right. And it knows when your dog needs to eat, and it just gives it the right amount, the right portion at that right time. And it's like that, but for for the dirt around your house, you know, you just fill it with water, soap, and yeah, yeah never think about it again. Mm-hmm. I like the idea of these things. I hate, I don't have one. I hate cleaning. Yeah. Um, you I find like it useful? Would you recommend? Would you, first off, would you recommend the one that you have? Uh, I think I'd recommend paying more for something with more features. Like I'm pretty upset at how basic ours is. So what's the thing that's missing? What's the problem that you wish was addressed? Um, the mapping of the house, so it knows what's it, what it's cleaned already. So ours will kind of just bounce around walls and yeah, might yeah. miss spots or clean the same spot ten times. Yeah. It doesn't really know what it's doing. So some kind of mapping device that knows which parts of the house it's cleaned already. More batteries so they can clean the house, the entire house at once. And I think the mopping feature would be nice as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so all... So it's all in one. So right. you don't need to do anything. Because right. right now we still need to come in after and mop the floor. Right. You know, so this thing kind of addresses all those. It's a question of how effective it is. One of the things that I was questioning when I was watching this video and when I'm seeing the seeing all the different uh, talk about it is that how, how much noise does this thing make? And another person brought that up in the, uh, was it Frequently Asked Questions? They say, how much noise does the a- EVA, Yeva, generate during vacuuming and self-cleaning and emptying. Uh, the response was, thanks for your support, Roy B. Yeva, is mopping mode. Less than 64 decibels, which is in sweeping mode, about 64. So that's about the level of a normal conversation. So not the conversation we're having now, but maybe more like this, I guess. Okay. So it's, it's manageable. You wouldn't want it to happen while you're sleeping, I imagine. You yeah. don't want someone having a conversation next to you while you sleep. Right. Which kind of defeats the night mode purpose. Yeah, maybe unless it was in another room. But yeah, I don't know if or I want to have work at night. Yeah. <laughs> and then traditional vacuum cleaner when it's doing is about 74 decibels. And that's what's happening during high level uh, dust collection is a little under 85 decibels, which is equivalent to city traffic. So that's a little bit loud when it has the vacuum that's actually collecting the dust. Mm-hmm. Um, and in fact, uh, what is it? Does the sound of traffic bother you, though? You know, you get used to it. It's kind of meditative. When I was a kid, like people used to complain about the sound of traffic in the city. Uh, we used to live in a village and everybody would say, oh, it's so much more peaceful and nice in the village. Yeah. But we used to have a house by the beach and I'd also go by the beach. And I realized there's an incredible similarity between the sound of waves crashing yeah. and cars going past your building. That's so, f- I totally agree with you. And that's what I told people whenever they vid- visited me in my very sh- first kind of shitty apartment that was next to the highway. I was just like, you know, like, uh, just don't look outside and just imagine that you are on the beach. And it's the same sound, right? Like you have the, it's the waves washing up against the shore. Uh, but with this, I feel like it'd be more of a constant drone. I don't think you're going to get beach vibes from Roy and me cleaning your house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish that for more transparency, I wish they would have shown it in action with actual sound. Uh, even in the all the videos, they have this kind of fun, upbeat music going on there. But I don't actually get a feel for what it sounds like when this thing is on because it is an electronic appliance at the end of the day. And I'm sure that it is making some level. Definitely. But if uh, robot vacuums are to anything to go by, they're much quieter than your regular vacuum. Right. Um, <clears throat> but, I mean, features aside, um, there's, there's some, like, dodgy things about the campaigner that I'm not too excited about. Yeah, what do you, what'd you see? So I was looking at their previous campaigns. I was looking at the, the reactions of backers on this campaign. Uh, the way the John Wang is replying to them in the updates and the comments, and I'm kind of getting this negative, this negative vibe. And again, this is going back to the dishonesty of it being a U.S. company but actually a Chinese company. Yeah, I feel like there are some there are some moments where they're not totally respectful of their backers. They've they had a previous campaign that is now in, in demand uh-huh. on Indiegogo. That's still running. People are still backing it, but apparently all support for that campaign has stopped while they're running this one. 
Hmm. So they're now working on raising more for a new product when they haven't delivered and aren't even answering or supporting the community to back their previous campaign. I see. And campaigns prior to that were delivered late, didn't work, broke down yeah. way too soon, and mm -hmm. didn't get the warranty that they were promised. It's not not a very trustworthy campaign, to be honest. Hmm. Which is risky. Might totally work out. Some people are happy with their product. It's yeah. not everyone. But then again, after you say that, it makes me wonder if those people are real people or if they are part of the... John Wang. John Wang. Association. <laughs> yeah. The, the Roy Me fan club. Uh, so are you in the comments section? Yeah, in the comments, I, I looked at a couple and uh, what did I find here? You want to read this one by Quang Soo Kim? <laughs> I won't even try. That. <laughs> it's Korean, right? I, I don't know what that is. Anyway, uh, Fayez Anwardin, I guess, is a backer. He says, hi, is the dust bag reusable or do we need to replace them every 60 days? Which I thought was interesting. Um, Thanks for your support, Fayez. Oh, you found it. The dust bags need to be replaced regularly. Under normal circumstances, the dust bags can store daily dust for about 60 days. So, yes. Would it be in the short end? I still don't even understand what that what 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 he, what that meant. You know, like do we need to replace them every sixty days? I'm guessing he means like throw them away and buy new ones. Uh huh. And I'm not sure based on the answer if you need to throw it away or if you just need to change them out, or clean it, and reuse it. it. Yeah, yeah, empty it and reuse it. Be Is replaced. It, say it has sixty days worth of dust to right. be stored in. But yeah, for example, I have two vacuums. The old school vacuums, they had the bag. Okay? Yes, they had to get yeah, I have that you have one. To throw it away. Yeah, yeah. Now, which is horrible. When I throw it away, it's just <laughs> dust in my face. I, I'm sure there's a smart way to do it, but I haven't figured it out. And then you need to get a new bag, or no? Not the one I have. No, no. It's a, it's a really. It's a really or I probably do one. need to buy a new bag, but I don't. I just reuse it. Yeah, I didn't get. I didn't understand this campaign either. Yes. Yeah. Is, is it a reusable bag? Is it not? By the way, this next one, this is a comment that I love. And I love the response because I don't understand it. Uh, the question is, oh, by the same person. When the dust bag is full, it will be reminded in the app? I think that was a question. Oh, no, that's John Wang responding to Fayez on Wardeen. No, no, this is Global Frequency Studios replying oh. to John Wang. Yeah, okay, this is what I didn't understand. Uh, it says, I know, I know, it's crazy and wonderful. We are truly humbled by all of the support. We will make an official update tomorrow, but the 11,000 stretch goal is a crossover print with Gunship Thunder Punch by Brian Shearer. <laughs> what does that mean? That's some weird code right there that I'm not aware of. Crossover print with Gunship Thunder Gunder, Punch. Gunship Thunder Punch by Brian Shearer. It sounds like something Shearer. out of Always Sunny. Thunder Gun Express. <laughs> Gunship Thunder Punch. Oh, it's, it's a campaign. It's like a, what looks like an anime drawing, a new graphic novel by G Transformers and GI Joe artist Brian Shearer. Oh, that's interesting. So, is he doing? Is he going to do something about the Roy Me? Is that is that what we're supposed to understand? He's going to add a design, a cover on top. I'm thinking a transformer, of, a transformer, a transformer that is transform. Yeah, that is a robot vacuum. I didn't quite understand what's going on there. But yeah, everyone else is excited. Wow, can't wait to see the print. This, to me, again, seems like your shady fakeness. Yeah. And Global Frequency Studios, if you're a real person, leave a comment below. But there's something about this whole exchange that just feels like John Wang is sitting at his computer signing in and out of different accounts. Ay, ay, ay. You think John Wang is a real person? Ooh, good question. Definitely not John. His name is not John, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. This Fayez on Wardy, he he's really on. He's really asking a lot of questions. I like I like backers like this, man. They don't they don't just back on what's written on the page. They really want to know, get in touch with a campaigner, yeah. Help a campaigner create. You know, if it's something worthy of creating, that's when they'll join in. Uh, I I have nothing more to say about this. Me neither, to be honest. Um. But I am curious, like we said a lot of negative stuff about this campaign. Don't take us for it. Do your own analysis. Remember that crowdfunding is not buying. Backing is not buying. You know, you need to do your research, check up on the creators, see their past campaigns, see what people are saying about them before making your decision. So I'm really curious. If you did back one of John Wang's previous campaigns, let us know in the comments. Like, was what did it promise on what he did? 
No. Did, Did he it deliver? deliver on what he promised? Yeah. And if you back this one, you know, why? What stood out to you about this one? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's a cool idea. Again, it's an idea that's already been done, but it seems like they're going one level up and adding a few more features. It looks cool. I would love to get this as a gift. I would not go out and buy it myself, yeah. I don't think. This is, this would be a heavier paperweight than uh, the BP. Than the watch, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, this was another Tech I Want review. I'm Dan. And I'm Rafi. And we'll see you next time. Yeah, till next time. Bye-bye.